Hey, this is Dustin. And I'm Steve, and you're listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, an irreverent look at wedding photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Listeners, if you're out there listening, I just ambushed Dustin right after we recorded the St. Patrick's Day episode and just told him I needed him to re-record something, and now I'm going to launch into another episode because we're trying to get a bunch of stuff recorded before... <laughs> Before I go on vacation, Dustin, are you? Are, do you have to go, or are you going to stay on for this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to let you just do this one by yourself. <laughs> oh hell yeah, flying solo! All right, so uh, do we have something we're talking about, Dustin? We have things to talk about. That this is why for like the last two weeks I've been like, don't mess with the actual show notes. Oh, whoops. Let me mess with the show notes. I'll create different show notes for all of our holiday specials, our special guests. Uh, we're keeping it real classy over here. Um, doesn't the first thing we actually have on the show notes for this next this this episode we're recording right now is um, oh gosh oh I don't know that I want to talk about this first thing on the show notes. It says, "Welp, Steve did a really really douchey thing." Doesn't do you want to talk about this? Uh, I'm not the kind of human being that calls someone out for doing a super, super douchey thing. Uh, but we can, uh, if you're looking to, you know, confess your transgressions to the public. Um, but Instagram, as we talked about earlier in the show, uh, does a sort of gives this popularity contest aspect where on Instagram stories, you can swipe up and it'll take you right to a link. And Steve thought, well, hey, I don't have, you know, that many Instagram followers on the Wedding Photo Hangover podcast, so I'm going to start a Steve Van Elk fan page on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that That is a very nice way to put it. Uh, I'm a very nice person, Steve. I am a nice person. I've been talking to Dustin for a while now, and I did a really, really douchey thing, guys. Um... The only way to, as Dustin said, share a link in your Instagram story that people can swipe up on and get to whatever you're sharing is if you have over 10,000 followers and you have a business profile. And the only way to get a business profile is if you have a Facebook page, but all my Facebook pages are already connected to other Instagram accounts. So the only way I can get a business profile for at Steven Van Elk, there's a plug, plug for what? At Steven Van Elk on, on Instagram. At Steven Van Elk. At Steven Van Elk. At Steven Van Elk. At Steven Van Elk. <laughs> that's, a plug at Steven for, Van Elk. that's a plug for you. <laughs> hey, check out at Steven Van Elk, everyone. <laughs> or block him, report him, <laughs> hide him. Uh, that'd probably be the best thing to do. You could follow us on the Wedding Photo Hangover podcast on Instagram, uh, which is just Wedding Photo Hangover. Well, there's something I'm going to have to cut out of this episode. Uh <laughs> Heaven forbid we promote the actual podcast. At Steven Van Elk. Okay, so... <laughs> so I created a Facebook page for myself. It has like one one follower. <laughs> as one does. As as one does. Yeah. As one follower, and I'm pretty certain it's not Jen. Even she was like, this is too douchey for me. It's listener Louis Novak. It's not Louis Novak. I don't think he knows about it. He'll find out about it right now when this drops. <laughs> <laughs> your your followership will explode when this episode drops. Yeah. <laughs> explode to two. So how do, how do we find you on Facebook, Steve? We just have to search... At Stephen Van Elk. <laughs> not to be confused with your personal page of at Stephen Van Elk. This is just <laughs> your your business page as a motivational speaker. Guys, I'm laughing a lot, but it's only because we're recording this directly after the St. Patrick's Day episode. And as you all know, I had like three beers during that episode. So, yeah. So he's saying he's a lightweight. Oh, so light. Wait. So lightweight. Yeah. So Dustin, do, do you have anything you want to say? Just, you know, let, let me have it. Is it working? Hit, hit me up. Did it work? Are we able to now, are you able to now do the whole swipe up dealio? Yeah, I did it for uh, the Nathan Mitchell oh. episode. It was like a week or two ago when I did it. Wow. And yeah. so just so the listeners know the parameters, you have to have 
over 10,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. And you have to be a business account. And is it, but is there any other restrictions? Not that I know of. Okay. Your links can be as long as you want and you can copy and paste them in. Man, I envy the day where I can be as cool as you, Steve. Well, Dustin, that's also in the show notes because that day is rapidly approaching. Not for Dustin underscore McKibben, but for Dustin and Corinne. Because no one cares about Dustin underscore McKibben. Everyone cares about Dustin underscore McKibben. Everyone loves Dustin underscore McKibben. No one wants to go there. I go there all the time. It's a sad place to be. But we can talk about is big news, breaking news, perhaps. Dustin started a at Big Burrito underscore creative Instagram account. Well, why is there an underscore? (laughs) Some asshole already has Big Burrito creative. Who's that asshole? Please tell me it's your editor. I can't. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's funny. It's because we were shooting a wedding last week and um, my third shooter that was shooting with me, Luke, who I love him to death. He's my bestie. Uh, so it's Luke. <laughs> Luke created Big Burrito Creative just so you can have it. Aaron turns to me and he's like, we should really start an Instagram account so we can do some behind the scenes stuff at this wedding. And I said, fine. Abs- so I'm sitting there on the trolley trying to set up an Instagram account. I'm sorry. You'd backtrack. You're sitting on the trolley? Yeah, it was like the little, you know, after the or before the ceremony time where they do like three hours driving around on a trolley. And um, so I'm trying to set up an Instagram account. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do Big Burrito Creative, you know, all one word. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? It's taken. So then I'm like trying all these other things, all taken. I'm like, and then Luke turns to me. He's like, which one of those would you like? <laughs> I can come up with prices. And I was, obviously he was joking, uh, but no, I can't seem to find Big Burrito Creative, all one word, on Instagram, so I don't understand why I can't have it. It's very irritating and frustrating. Come back to us, Steve. Steve, come back to us. I'm Googling this right now. Right now I'm Googling this. Um, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Big Burrito Films in no, Indianapolis they're... and Fort Wayne is on Instagram. You were you aware of whatever the hell that is? What are you on Instagram? Where are you at? What's going on? I'm just googling stuff. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll we'll come back to reality. I uh, we're gonna get to the bottom of this mystery. Oh, speaking of mysteries, you know what else is in the show notes? What what else is in the show notes, Steve? Because I can't find the show notes because I'm still in the St. Patty's Day show notes. <laughs> That's not on me, dude. <laughs> Click out. <laughs> Click out. <laughs> You sent them to two different email addresses. <laughs> also in the show notes, um, guys, I don't know if you, uh, if everybody here follows me on Instagram, that's at Steven Van Alk. <laughs> <laughs> but recently, um, guys, I discovered a mystery, a real mystery on Twitter. As you guys know, I spend a lot of time searching hashtags for cool tweets, cool, cool Instagram posts, l- looking for that cool stuff, the inspiring stuff. And one of the ones, uh, one of the the searches I typically do is just for wedding photography in general, because I want to see what other wedding photographers are doing out there. On Twitter, I've ran across this recurring sentence that I didn't realize was all being tweeted by one person. Um, And the sentence is, they'd love it if I stayed here, comma, got into wedding photography. And I kept seeing this pop up, like, because I've been doing these searches for like, the last three or four years and i just assumed that this was like a taylor swift lyric in a song or something like they love it if i stay here got into wedding photography and i'd be like taylor swift your songs don't rhyme and they kind of suck and now we just lost all of our taylor swift fans oh yeah oh man mission accomplished i did it dustin so rude i finally the other day broke down and i was like i keep seeing this I got to know why people are tweeting this. And so I Googled it and I Googled every single like iteration of it. I could think of like, maybe they spelled something wrong. Maybe they put a comma in the wrong place and nothing came up on Google anywhere. Nothing at all, Dustin. So then I went to Twitter and I did a search for that sentence. And do you know what came up, Dustin? Should I stay or should I go now? (laughs) How do you love that song so much? 
<laughs> one person has been tweeting that exact sentence every like four to seven days since 2013. Is it like maybe they're having writer's block and that's like a lyric in their song? I have no idea. Since 2013, every like four to seven days. So I want to know, I saw, I saw that you wrote them back. Oh, I did. I've written them several times now and they will not respond. It might be like a bot or something. I don't know. It has to be a bot. It has to be a bot. I can't get my, I cannot get my head around it, but, um. So for the listeners out there, this is the kind of weird shit Steve lays in bed at night pondering. Some of us are like SEO and like Instagram and Facebook hacking and like, how can we grow our business, shoot bigger, bigger, better weddings. And Steve's like, I just don't understand. They love it if I stayed here. Got into wedding photography. What does it mean? What does it mean, Sarah Hart? At Sarah underscore I'm number four. What does it all mean? These are the things that keep me up at night. and They're the things that should keep you up at night too, Dustin. And the world is coming. This is creepy, man. It's so creepy. Oh, Stephen. But Dustin, now that we've brought this up, uh, I just want to know. What if you stayed here? I got into wedding photography, Dustin. Or what if you went? Should you stay or should you go now? Who are the they in that sentence? Is it her family? Is it her friends? Is it the millions of brides out there who just want those sweet, sweet pics? But I just want to say, <laughs> if you're getting bored and you really want to te- you know, head over to Instagram, at Big Burrito Creative, with an underscore somewhere in there, <laughs> is a great place to just take a peek at, take a look at, see what you think. Right now, it's four photos, <laughs> all behind the scenes of stupid crap we've done over the past little while, and um, we're going to get some actual videos on there soon. Um, but yeah. I'm, so, I mean, I can solve your 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 question about uh, what's going on with your Instagram account and not being able to get the thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Somebody had that name already, and they deleted it. And Instagram hangs on to names after they're deleted for the person and it's connected to their like email address and they hang on to them for a certain amount of time. I don't know how long it is, but that time hasn't passed yet. So you can't get that uh, thing. That's not fair. If you give it enough time, you'll be able to get it. That's really unfair though. Why is that unfair? Uh, Because that's the name of my business. (laughs) But it's the name of somebody else's business that also uh, is no longer exists. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> uh, well, my biggest fear is, since you've said that, is did I start an Instagram account with that name and forgot about it? And deleted it, yeah. I wouldn't have deleted it. I'm too lazy to, to delete things. But yeah, we started the account yesterday, and we already have 10 followers. Exponential growth right there, guys. Speaking of having a bunch of followers. None, uh, none of Dust- which are Stephen Van Elk. <laughs> I didn't know it existed until we did this podcast. By the time our listeners hear this, I'll be following that and commenting on every video that I shot or edited for you. That one's really good. Recently, Dustin at Dustin and Corinne on Instagram has shot up a ton. Not so much recently. Uh, Just this week, this week alone, you went from 7,000 followers at the beginning of the week to 7,700 now. Have I really? Yeah. Dustin, do you want to do you want to talk about your newfound Instagram success? I don't really do a great job of tracking. Do you do you even uh, manage that, or do you did you hire that out to somebody? Oh, I hired that out a long time ago. Well, who, uh, whoever you hired that out to, they they uh, they've started to pick up some steam. They're they're making some headway for you, buddy. Yeah, I see that. Do you know what tactics they're using to uh, attract new followers? I have no do, idea. Do you want to talk about this at all? Do you want to enlighten our listeners? Uh, no, it was uh, probably a few months back when I was realizing Instagram had more bearing on uh, my business than Facebook did. And I was struggling to pick up the amount of momentum I wanted in gaining followers. And after doing some research into tactics and strategies to uh, expand on your followers, I just said, I don't have the time and energy like Steven Van Elk does 
to dedicate to Instagram. And so I reached out to a couple of different uh, companies that specialize in helping you with that kind of thing. And that don't involve like buying bots and all that crap. And so, yeah, they're just kind of taking it over for me until I feel that it reaches a point where I can kind of handle it on my own. Which is anytime it's over 10K and you can add those links. <laughs> exactly. I'm close. Yeah, I didn't realize how close, close I was. Buff. Yeah, you should be proud. That's good. Then you just got to get Big Burrito Creative up there, buddy. Uh, it's cool because, you know, the more followers you have, the easier it is to gain more followers until you hit the point where I have where you just stop caring about your Instagram and then you just kind of just level off and you don't gain any more ever. Let's check out Steven Van Elk. Who and you check, a- you check every few days and you're like, oh gosh, oh, I've lost so many followers in the past week. That's where I'm at. That's, that's my level. Just losing followers left and right. Um, and so Dustin, I got to say for all the crap you're giving me about not following big burrito creative, I just checked big burrito creative to see who they were following. And Steven Van Elk's not on that list. I mean, I don't want to get this podcast weighed down too much in like the inner politics of Dustin and Steve, but really, bro? Um, yeah, because they are following, they're following the wedding photo hangover. So there's that. And speak, speaking of people not following people, I don't want to get too into the inner politics of our relationship, <laughs> but on Twitter, Dustin McKibben is not following Stephen Van Elk. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be because I don't even know the last time Dustin McKibben has been on Twitter. <laughs> but I'm I'm sure he's I'm sure he says glorious things on there, guys. Uh, I find that I don't need to follow my real friends on social media, so I simply just yell out in random directions in my house at Stephen Van Elk. Talk to me. And then Alexa. And I always respond because I have his entire house bugged. And then I put like some Amazon Echoes through there that I can control from my yep. house. So I'm always in constant communication with Dustin because that's the kind of love I have for him. Exactly. I frequently that's, spy on him. That's the way I like it. Oh, righty. Speaking of Twitter. They're cracking down on people that post the same tweet to several different accounts. I don't know if you've seen that, but every once in a while when you get on Twitter, if you do like a search for like a certain phrase or a hashtag, you'll see like 35 tweets in a row from different accounts that are all the exact same tweet. And Twitter's trying to clean that up and get rid of it because it's annoying and it's spammy. And I couldn't be happier with some of these changes that Twitter's making right now. Like the, the tw- Twitter was basically a flaming pile of garbage last year during the election. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to say the election, Dustin. I wouldn't dare get political. Plus, that was two years ago, Dustin. Come on. Um, cool. Enough about Twitter. Let's <laughs> talk about something more important. Uh, I was investigating something called Hoot <gasps> Suite. More investigations? Oh, hell yes. This is like a mystery show now. Steve and Dustin, private detectives. A Dinner lady th- with long legs came into their office. And she... Why does it have to be a lady? A gentleman with long legs <laughs> came into their office. He was smoking a cigar. He had um, he had legs that went down to the floor. Oh yeah! I like to think of this as like dinner theater. A lot of our listeners, I imagine, they play this during dinner and they want to be, you know, vaguely mysteriously entertained. The man who came into their office, he had two, count them, two butt cheeks, <laughs> and they were both butt cheeks. Cheeks of butts. Yes. And from now on, Steve will be limited to one beer on this podcast (laughs) and one episode per podcast. Um, One beer per episode per night. So I was investigating something called Hoot Sweet. Have you heard of this? Yeah, because it's been around for like the last eight years. Correct. But not until recently has Hoot Sweet brokered an agreement with Instagram thus allowing them to be the first paid service that would allow you to post photos, scheduled posts through their platform directly into your Instagram account. So you no longer have to schedule a post and then you just get a notification from Hootsuite saying, hey, you should post it now. Yeah, you don't, that is gone. 
And Cause that was the worst. It was like, why yeah. does this even exist? Why yeah. do you even say you can schedule posts if you send me a notification and then I have to go in and post it? Yeah, I signed up for a different service similar to Hootsuite, like all jazz. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to change my social media game. I was like dropping in photos and creating albums and all this stuff, drop them in. Uh, and then it was like a two week free trial thing. And they like, all of a sudden I get like a text and it's like, time to post to Instagram. And I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Like, this is how it's going to be. So I just got the email from Hootsuite, I think like a couple days ago, that they are now the first, they brokered some sort of contract with Facebook, which is obviously Instagram now, that they will be the first first try to see how this goes to make sure it doesn't like, f which it will, flood Instagram with uh, more professional quality photos versus your typical iPhone snaps. Um. But yeah, I'm excited. They aren't allowing video through it yet. You still have to do video the old fashioned way with like the whole copy and paste uh, technique. Uh, but so can... video videographers are still second degree citizens on. Yes. Because uh, that's what it's always felt like. You can't tag people in a video. Yeah. Video is still riding backseat. Uh, photo is first. Which is um, why if you're serious about video, you should really be posting to YouTube. Correct. Instagram is garbage for video. That's why I post to Vimeo because I'm even less serious than those posting to YouTube. <laughs> That's a paid service, man. That's for, uh, you know, if you're going to put stuff on your website and you don't want to like pay for, what is it, Wixia or Wisteria or wh whatever the other big competitor is to Vimeo. That's more expensive. You're all good. Don't worry about it. So, Dustin, since we're talking just about social media, basically, for the first 20 minutes of this entire episode... I thought this it's was just a like, social media episode. It's just like nails on an effing chalkboard. Uh, have you signed up for Vero yet? No. Because by the time this episode comes out, I assume most people will have abandoned Vero because it looks terrible and I've tried using it and it feels terrible. But in case it doesn't, you going to get on it? Probably. I was going to get on it the other day, but then I saw some people posting on um, Facebook about how slow it was because of the mass ex exodus uh, from Instagram to that platform. What's it called? Vero? Vero? V-E-R-O. Vero. Vero. Vario. Um, Rosario Dawson. Yes. So, yeah. I'll probably like get an account on there. Um, it's probably like one of the other half a dozen social media platforms that sort of pop up and they like, you know, they're cool for like a couple months and then people are like, all right, come on down and try Ashton Kutcher's new social media platform. It's called Chime In. Uh, and I know like, um, uh, get, get on over here and try out Google's new platform. It's called Google Buzz. I, I thought... Hey, have you ever tried this new platform called Friendster? <laughs> Friendster. Hey, I don't know about you, but I've been checking out this thing called MySpace. I'm still waiting for the MySpace reboot. MySpace 2.0, where they just, like, come back at it, and they're like, Hey, Tom's been over here just eyeing you from afar, and he'd like you to come back on Tom over. works for Facebook. Oh, really? Last I checked, yeah, he was hired by Facebook. Man, what a just tr turncoat. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's back at MySpace now. You you never know. Stuff things move pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around every once in a while, you might just miss it. Does MySpace still exist in some shape or form? Yeah. I thought it was like trying to be more of like a music platform. Now are they going to take out SoundCloud? <laughs> <laughs> Is SoundCloud going to take itself out? Or are we going to have to find a new place to host this plat podcast? So it doesn't. Let's uh. Let's talk about a real, real topic. Dun, dun, dun. I'm, I'm sure I found this one on Facebook, and it was a question, but I didn't actually write it down. So this isn't going in Q&A. Seeing as videographers and guests frequently have DSLRs at weddings, how do you establish yourself at a wedding or other event as the photographer? And have you ever had any power struggles with guests? Mm. This is like a cousin uncle Angie Bob situation. Uncle cousin Angie Bob. Angie cousin uncle Bob. Yeah, I've had one situation, maybe two, during family portraits. 
yeah, two come to mind right off the bat where it was uh, an aunt that insisted that after every family portrait I took that she had to also take it. And um, so, yeah, it was after the, I mean, but it's like you need those experiences to understand why that isn't okay. And I was very graceful and very courteous. And I was like, you know, and I let the bride know, I was like, I'm totally cool with your aunt doing this. uh, But just so you know, we won't be able to do any pictures of bridal party afterwards because of how much this is slowing us down. Yep. Um, So as long as you're okay with that, you know, this is your wedding day. I want your expectations met. And as soon as I said that to her, uh, she was like, shut that aunt down. And then you shut the aunt down? Uh, she had like one of her parents say something to her. Oh, I was hoping like you went over and you just took the camera from me. You're like, I am the aunt now. Now I am the aunt. No, I did that like whole like, uh, I can't think of his name, but that basketball player where I just swat the camera out of her hand. Like, not in my house. And you shook your finger back and forth and got all yeah. sassy. L- little you, sassy. You did, did a little thing with your head going back and forth. Like, it's a bobblehead kind of baby. That's in my house. Yeah, that's what I did. I believe you're talking about Dennis Rodman, right? No, it's that like super tall basketball player. Shaquille O'Neal. You're talking about the Shaquille. No. Shaq? No. Nope. Not, not Shaq? A ton of commercials, Steve. Yeah. Yao Ming? Yes, that guy. I think. He was, he was from China. I don't know if he's still in the league. He was very tall. He played when like I was in high school. So, yeah. Anyways, so moving on. Moving on, Dustin. You you haven't even begun to answer that question. Videographers, what do you what do you do? They got DSLRs. You ever get flack from guests about that? I I don't understand the question. So a thing that frequently happens with Jen and I is we'll be shooting a wedding and there will be videographers there. Mm-hmm. And the videographers will be, they'll, they'll get much closer to the bride and groom during the wedding. Uh, or they'll be like right up on the bride and groom during the first dance, other things like that. And then my wife and I will start getting super dirty looks from guests right after it happens. Because they assume that we're all one unit because we're all using Canon cameras or whatever. Not even necessarily Canon, but we're all using DSLRs. So the question is how to handle when you get flack from guests because of what videographers are doing that in no, no way. The question is how do you establish yourself at the event as you're just the photographer? You're not responsible for those, those uh, ch- chuckleheads over there. I don't know. I, I guess I don't really see that as, uh, as my problem as far as like making sure what they're doing doesn't impact my reputation. Um, because most of the time at the weddings we're doing, if there is videography happening, uh, it's big burrito creative and that's also that's, Dustin McKibben. So he doesn't care at, at big burrito underscore. underscore creative, but you can type it all any way you want and you'll find it. It's pretty easy. Or you'll, um, you'll find that there was an account called big burrito creative that was deleted. <laughs> no longer exists. <laughs> This Steve bought or started and it will no longer give to me because he's a cold hearted. No, I'd sell it to you. I'd sell it to you right away if I owned it. If you own Big Burrito Creative and you're out there, Dustin will buy that. I will buy that. I'm only four photos deep. I can start over. (laughs) Yeah, but you're going to have to work extra hard to get me to follow the new one. You're not following this one. Dustin, re- refresh. I followed it while you were complaining that I didn't follow it. I followed. It. How did you think I knew that you didn't follow breaking, me? Breaking news, guys. We are up to eleven followers. Feels like one of those telephones. <laughs> Tele. If just five more people follow Big Burrito Creative right now, Dustin is committed to giving away one whole kidney. <laughs> uh, all right. Jen and I had an experience at a wedding. We were doing photos for it. There mm-hmm. were three videographers. The uh, groom who was getting married was also a videographer, and he had hired these guys because he loved their work. But they were not like friends of his or anything. He just admired their work from afar in the area. And during the wedding ceremony, they had 50 millimeter lenses on their cameras. 
And he did not realize that when he hired them and all the shots he had seen from them, like during the ceremony were like close ups on the bride and groom's faces. So do you, do you know how they got those Dustin? <laughs> so that reminds me of uh, when we shoot in New York, there's this one videographer that it seems like he's always at the weddings we shoot uh, because we kind of travel in the same circle as far as like referrals go. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, they're the same way. They We shoot these like super low lit ceremonies and how they feel that they can get those low lit situations is they put 50 millimeter lenses, they shoot at F1.2 and, you know, they are like right up on top of the bride and groom and then they have one right, you know, 25% of the way from the bride and groom down the aisle. And I'm that just one doesn't like, bother me. The one down the aisle It's the ones that are up like on stage. Like the si situation for Jen and I, like at this particular wedding I referenced before, literally all three videographers were on stage within five feet of the bride and groom. One of them, there was like a, there's like a little like half wall thing for the baptismal. One of them got into like the baptismal and popped up over that half wall. So he's literally in between the bride and groom and half of our shots. And when the wedding was over, we had guests come up to us and complain to us. So this is why I brought this one up, because it feels so relevant to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it really just sounds like at the end of the day that you guys need to be more responsible <laughs> at handling the videographers. <laughs> and uh, it's a little irresponsible. I mean, we all know, Steve, that video rides the back seat of the bus and they need a driver, Steve. They need a driver. <laughs> To keep them in check and let them know what's good, what's bad. So the um, next time you shoot a wedding with us and you're doing video. You won't see us with 50 millimeter lenses, that's for sure. What you're telling me is you want me to tell you what to do all day long. <laughs> yes, that is what exactly what I want. Uh, no, with the wedding we shot last week, uh, we were doing video and not doing photo at all. And the photographer was from out of town. And... Uh, it was really weird for me because she was like so timid and so backseat that I was actually, I was, I was the videographer in the driver's seat and I was like, Oh my God, what do I do with all this power? I got to dictate like where the first look was, where we did everything, where we went for photos. And I don't she understand. Was, you don't, when you're typically the videographer and not the photographer, that's not a conversation that you have with the photographer. It, it's always a conversation I try to have with the photographer, but then it's like when it comes down to it, it's the photographer. Like the dynamic is always the photographer chooses when and where things happen, and I'm secondary. Like video is always secondary. That is crazy crazy to me every time jen and i shoot with videographers we always go to them and we say hey this is what we were thinking for the first look does that work for you or do you need something else we always try to like find what works best yeah i mean that's how it should be i do i cannot understand being like i'm just gonna dictate everything like how do, how do you like when you're a photographer and you're working with a videographer like the the things you guys are doing are so closely related like you need a good relationship with that other person like we get referrals from videographers and we give referrals to videographers like why would we ever want to do anything to jeopardize that relationship fortunately we live in a world where photographers value themselves more than videographers and i'm not going to say that i'm not completely at fault i know when we're working with someone who isn't a part of at big burrito creative um, on Instagram, the best wedding filmmaking storytelling. You got You got to get that company. underscore in, buddy. You got to get that underscore in. It's at Dustin underscore McKibben, and if you don't put in the underscore in his Instagram username, you'll get like a shirtless dude. Because that's what happened to me on Skype the other day. And you had a great conversation with him, I am sure. Well, yeah, I might be doing a new podcast with him about how to get jacked, how to get swole. Yacked. Um. But yeah, I don't really remember where we were going. Oh, that, like when we're shooting with a videographer that isn't us, you know, like I honestly care a lot less about them than I would if we were doing it because my name's not on the line. Dick bag. Yeah, I know. Asshole. But we shot with, we shot a wedding last summer with a really predominant videographer um, here in Indiana and... Like, we worked really hard to compromise, 
And we sort of, in a way, we got railroaded off by them because we were almost too kind and too gracious with their time. <laughs> I like, don't believe that. I don't believe oh, that for one second. Oh, absolutely. You should have seen Corinne. She was like, I don't, she's like, you, you were, you were too nice to them because they were concerned that they weren't going to get their shots. And so they kindly asked if they could do their video shots before we did our pose, like our portrait time with the uh, bridal party and the bride and groom. That's a no. That's a no every time. Why would the videographer even ask that? They were just so kind about it that I was like, and I, I be, being a videographer myself sometimes, I was like, oh yeah, I totally understand. You know, you want to get into the reception and get set up and get your audio run and all that stuff. I was like, oh yeah, perfect. You know, I was picturing like three shots, you know, real quick after family portraits and they'd be out. And um, they were like, I mean, they took like an, they took our entire portrait time up. And so then we yeah. were trying to get photos while they were doing theirs and they, they, they hated that. They were just like, oh, and they, it was just a mess. It was a mess. Um, of course they hated it because then they don't have no usable audio because all they're getting is the shutter clicks. You got you to gotta get those Sony cameras. I don't know if you know about them yet, but they're mirrorless, so they don't have a shutter. Are you familiar uh, with Sony I, cameras? I, I don't know if you know this, Steve, but most videographers don't use the audio during the portrait time. I know this, Dustin. Okay, just confirming. But, but if, I, if you were like really doing your job as a videographer, you'd still want the audio because, you know, you might need it for like a little background noise. I don't know if you're familiar with actually making videos <laughs> for a living. No. That's why we only have 10 followers on Instagram. We're not a real <laughs> video company, and so we have 10,000 followers. Oh, all right. I think we've hit this one into the ground without ever actually answering it. <laughs> What would you do, Steve? What would you do? How did you handle the situation when you and Jen's reputation were was looked poorly upon? Oh, any guests who complained to me, I just said, I'm sorry, but the videographers aren't here with us. And I had a guest specifically say, but they have the same cameras as you. And I go, yes, and our cameras are capable of shooting video as well, but we are not here together. That is the most ridiculous claim as be like, oh, you're right. I think actually everyone here that has an iPhone, I'm probably related to. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> I just laid it out for them and I tried to be like friendly, but also firm. You know, those like things you put on microphones, like for newscasters that like yeah. have, you know, like logos or whatever. Like one of those are on your flash that says just photos or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and then pass those out to the video guys too. Like put this on your camera that says video. <laughs> One of my favorite things when I'm doing video at a wedding is when people come up to me and ask me to do photos of them because I'm using a DSLR and I just get to look at them and say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> and it's not that I can't. It's just that, you know, I wouldn't step on the photographer's shoes. But also if I was a photographer, I'd also be like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I was so kind to the photographer and really really tried to help her out because that happened so many times at last week's wedding where uh, people were like, hey, like the groom mainly, he would be like, hey, Dustin, can you get a picture of like me and this guy or like me and this group of guys? And I'd be like, yeah, let me, let me, you know, get, you know, and then I'd like get him to do something goofy on video. And then I'm like, okay, now let me go get the photographer. <laughs> and the photographer was just staring <laughs> daggers at you. Like, why did you drag me over here? I'm not ever going to use these photos. Pretty right? much. Yeah. No, she was like super kind. I'm a little pissed because I did this super creative ring shot and um, I thought it was super cool. And then like right when I was like locked it down and had it ready to shoot, uh, she came over and sniped it and got a photo of it. And why, why are you pissed about that? Who cares? Uh, because I always like it when I'm doing photo and video that my video ring shot is different than the their photo ring shot so that it's a little bit of difference between the two because most of their video is going to be the same locations for everything else so i always like the ring shot to be just a little bit something different see i always like to have a cohesive whole when jen and i are doing photo and video so that the ring shots look the same all the shots look the same ish throughout the day the editing looks the same i want people to look at things and be like oh these people they they know what they're doing they have a plan when they come in they have a style they're going for called uh lazy 
we only do the same thing for every single thing. Now I want I want to hire someone that you know they're going to think outside the box a little bit and they're going to they're going to give me a little bit of difference here and there. Like if you order two steaks, Steve, you're going to get one with maybe mashed potatoes and maybe you get one with a, you know, like steak fries. And if you're Dustin, you're going to get one steak and you're going to pour ranch all over it. (laughs) Oh, deep cuts. And for those of you who don't know that reference, you're going to have to go back through and listen to other episodes. All right. Do we, are we, where are we at here? I'm so lost now. Let's do some Q&A. What? What's Steve? Alexis from the Facebook groups asks, I'm wanting to get into wedding photography, but I'm still fairly new to actually charging and taking more professional photos for others. How would I go about getting started and building more of a portfolio? That is a fantastic question, Alexis. Um, The best way to do it, honestly, is to do sort of like mini stylized shoots. going to either local bridal shops or you know if you have friends who have been married or you can even go to consignment shops and find dresses that look like wedding dresses or just white dresses it doesn't have to be a two thousand dollar wedding gown and you can you know get a handful of flowers from the grocery store and sort of do some bridal portraits post them on social media social media has been and i know steve and i have hammered social media to death in this episode at steven van elk sorry what (sighs) Uh, and Steven is spelled with P-H, for those of you listening. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, S-T-E, pretty P-H- hot, E-N, Van Elk. Um, so yeah, uh, you can throw those up on Instagram. And fortunately and unfortunately, for those of you who are just getting started in photography, in Instagram and other social media platforms give you sort of a head, head up on the game because or leg leg up i believe is the way you say that yeah i believe that is the way you say it doesn't <laughs> head head up i don't i don't know what i was going with that uh but you can sort of post things and it looks like you're a legit you know professional photographer even though it was just like your friend sally wearing you know your sister's wedding dress in your backyard with beautiful light i mean the biggest thing i would say uh getting started is is study light get to know light understand how light affects people and portraits and um, take light out on a date ask light questions about you know what its childhood was like what was its upbringing like you gotta really get to know light but you gotta tuck it in before it goes to bed at sunset Aww. <laughs> then you get to know moonlight dustin moonlight night light um but yeah light is you know obviously key and then from there i would start to play around with flash and understand how that works how the interaction between flash and bouncing and not bouncing and and then kind of finding your style and then if you can second shoot with a talented photographer like uh at dustin underscore mckibben or at steven spelled ph um (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steven with a PH is really talented. Steven with a V, not so much. Stay away from that, dude. Sounds like a creep. Um, but yeah, second shooting is key, or even third shooting. Like, we actually have an intern this year uh, that we're really excited about. She's studying photography at one of the uh, colleges here in Indiana, and uh, we're curious to see how that goes. But... These are all, I mean, Steve, I'll let you take it. Anything you tips, tricks? I would say when you're getting started, like doing some styled shoots is a good idea, but that's not really going to give you a good idea of what it's like to shoot at a wedding. One thing that Jen and I both did back in the day when we were thinking about getting started as wedding photographers was we just brought a DSLR to a few of our like friends or family members' weddings and shot some photos and... The important thing there is don't pop out in the aisle. Don't get in the real photographer's way. Don't ask the real photographer a ton of questions. Don't try to shoot over the real photographer's shoulders. Um, Just shoot stuff that is fun to you to shoot and get kind of an idea of like how a wedding goes and watch the real photographer and see how they're working, what they're doing, because that'll give you an idea of how turned on and turned up you need to be throughout the entire wedding to make sure you're always keyed in on the right moments and getting the right things. 
but shooting an actual wedding is really stressful. There's a lot of work that goes into it. So just getting a camera to a wedding and getting some shots in is going to be super, super beneficial. But if you want to practice the like portraits and stuff like that, styled shoots, like what Dustin was saying is definitely the way to go because you cannot, as a guest at a wedding, grab your DSLR and follow the bride and groom and the wedding photographer out and do portraits with them. Like that's, that's, that's wrong. But like, it's cool to shoot photos of the ceremony and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. We, we make fun of a uh, cousin, uncle, Angel Bob, uncle, cousin, Angel Bob, whatever it was we called that person. But those people are there and they're just trying to capture the day. They're trying to get some good photos, make some good memories. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you should be one of those people too. Absolutely. But I think to get real world experience of shooting a wedding, to even know if that's something you want to do. Second shoot. Is to shadow a photographer for a wedding. And if you're, if you're listening out there and like the best way to come about that is to like, say like, I, I don't expect to be paid. I just want to come and help. Like, don't even take pictures. Like just come to the first wedding and just help carry things, you know, help change lenses, whatever. Um, because I, I find that actually more helpful than people that are like, ah, oh, I just want to take pictures. I'm like, that doesn't help me at all. So no. It doesn't help Dustin if you second shoot for him. What helps Dustin is if you just stand right by his side and when he needs a new camera body or a new lens, you're right there to get it for him. Yep. So just a But in a good relationship where you're getting something out of it too, you should also be taking photos. You should be second shooting. So yeah. So then you work up to like obviously then if that went well for me. And like, I was like, oh, this is kind of a cool person to have around. I'm like, hey, we have another wedding next weekend. Uh, I'd love to have you come third shoot. And that way you can kind of get your feet wet. That way I can look at your images. I can give you some feedback. Um, but I'm not going to waste my time if it feels one-sided. Get your feet wet. Feet wet. So Jessica from the Facebook group says, my husband just bought me a brand new laptop which possibly has a broken keyboard because the next thing it says is <laughs> then Lappin top M does the laptop. The laptop does not is what it should say, but it's then Lappin top M does not have a CD drive. I have a ton of photos of my kids and family through the years. Plus, when I save my photos and want to clear up room on the computer, I just always save them to CDs. So what should I do Careful. now so I don't lose my pictures? Also, what should I get use to give to customers when I do photo shoots if I can't give them CDs, Dustin? Did you dig this question out of like the 90s? <laughs> That's what I thought when I read it. But no, it's like a recent, like maybe a, two months ago, because it's been in our show notes for a while. But yeah. Has she like, have USB drives gone out of stock and I just don't know about them yet? <laughs> maybe in her part of the world, wherever she lives, I don't pretend to assume that all of these people in our Facebook groups uh, are from the Americas. Uh, this person is from the Americas. Maybe they don't have access to thumb drives or the internet well i think maybe the real problem is um with the advent of the smartphone and especially the iphone like you can't just plug a thumb drive into an iphone so you're gonna need a cd to get the photos to your iphone right <laughs> <laughs> that lot that logic seems pretty clear yeah, holds up. to me you, get, you know what you do you get an mp3 cd player Oh, one of those disc men's from back in the day that plays MP3 ones because that can store like files on it. And then you, and then plug you get the that. iPhone attachment. Yeah, you plug that straight into the headphone jack of your iPhone. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> ah. You're, you're close. You're so close, Steve. I felt like I was really on that time to something. Is there is there a CD a Bluetooth CD thing we could do? <laughs> you take your headphone jack adapter. You plug it into your your microphone cord in your computer. That goes to your phone. Your phone then Bluetooths to uh, your CD-ROM player that is in your old laptop. And then you play music 
through those speakers. Then and you're golden. To set this off, though, you have to make sure you place the candle right underneath the rope. So when the candle lights, the rope burns through, and then the bowling ball falls, and it hits the spring. And the spring pops the bowling ball back up, and then it hits the switch. The switch turns the fan on. The fan blows the feathers, and one of the feathers hits the play button on the... Oh, the feathers. They're not going to be able to hit the play button in on the CD player, Dustin. Damn it. Oh, man. I thought we had Rube Goldberg this whole thing together. Oh, so close. I almost uh, got it. But to answer your question, Jessica, from the Facebook groups, um, what people are using now in place of CDs is they're using tape. Uh, so you're <laughs> essentially, uh, you go through your photos while holding a cassette player, and it records the sounds of the photos uh, and transcribes them to tape. And um, that's sort of the, the new edge version. Even better, you, you get a VHS camcorder and uh, you print all the photos off. And then you take that VHS you camcorder it. and you just flip through the photos by hand while recording it. And then you just send the VHS tape to your client. Done. Boom. But don't use a Betamax. And then have it transcribed to DVD. <laughs> so that's the next question. Yeah. Lee from the Facebook groups. Why do photographers do the following with their Facebook advertising? Quotes. Only a few days left for 2018. Book now for 2018 and get 25% off. Inflatable wavy arms guy. I assume. That's what I feel like goes after that. Surely you would keep your price the same or up it if you're that full. You wouldn't be giving people a discount, right? Says Lee from the Facebook groups. Uh, I don't know. It just depends on... How hungry you are, Steven. Why are you just staring at your computer screen like you're trying to gauge what my face is doing after you say how hungry you are? That ridiculous (laughs) accent. How hungry you are. Oh, gosh. You mouth-breathing son of a bitch. I just want to know how hungry you are. If you really only had a few dates left for 2018, you wouldn't say 25% off. You would keep the price the same or raise it. I 100% agree with this Lee guy from the Facebook groups. This is an intelligent question to ask. We offer a slight discount <laughs> um, every now and then if I want to fill up a dates, but I'm, I'm on the insanity end of the spectrum where I like to be shooting every single weekend. You would give a 25% off discount. No, not a 25% okay. discount, but like we just had someone book uh, today that was sort of on the fence because we were kind of expensive for them. And I said, you know, like, hey, it's a Friday wedding. So I was like, hey, I'll give you guys an extra, like a free hour of coverage. You know, if you lock this down by the end of the month or something. Just got to lock that Dustin McKibben in. And yeah, they booked right away. It's crazy. Some, I mean, I, I find that giving discounts is, you know, not always the way okay. to go. But, but to clarify, you weren't advertising on Facebook, only a few dates left. Book no, I, I don't do the whole car salesman thing now. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what that comes off as. And like, I don't think people realize it, but when people read those sorts of ads on Facebook, they don't think this is a quality product that I'm going to be getting. They're like, oh, bargain shopping. When you go bargain shopping, you're unexpecting the best. But I do know a photographer, and I'd be curious to know your answer to this question. Um, I do know a photographer who's constantly posting her available dates left on Instagram like Facebook, she says, because I asked her about it, I'm like, why do you do that? Like, I feel like by making it seem like you have all this availability left that you would be somehow deterring clients away um, because of the not using the scarcity tactic that most of us use. And she says that, no, it actually influences brides that are on the fence as to when they're picking dates. They're like, oh, if I, you know, I know this photographer is available this date, I'm just going to go ahead and plan my wedding for this date and then book her. I don't know if you had any uh, thoughts on posting what dates you do have available. That is a tactic people can use. Uh, I'm not saying it's a great tactic, but if you think people will decide on a date based on your availability then yeah go for it i mean we have trouble all the time with getting multiple contacts for the same date so if we could try to get 
contacts for dates when we're not already booked. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea to me. I don't know. Like, that doesn't sound like a great idea as far as, like, you said the scarcity thing. If you say you have a ton of dates open, it's really, it doesn't seem like you're in high demand and it doesn't seem like uh, people would want to book you. But if this is something that she thinks is working for her, then sounds like a great idea to me. Cool. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast with your hosts, Dustin and Steve. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Wedding Photo Hangover and on Twitter at Wed Pick Hangover. You can find Dustin on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben. And you can find Steve at Steven Van Elk. Do you want to get your joke in? Oh, what? You, Steve at Steven Van Elk. Do you, do you want to get your little joke in? It's Steve with a PH. There you go, buddy. You got it. I'm proud of you. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Your head is pounding. Your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being is aching for the sweet embrace of death. That's right. Next Sunday, after you shoot another wedding. And, you know, we do in the show notes, if you look in the show notes in your podcast app of choice, we post uh, all of our links in the show notes. So you don't even have to remember what we say. You can just click the link down there, or tap it or whatever. Do, you do can actually listen to this podcast on mute and just read the show notes. That's- yeah. Yeah, that's great. I would actually prefer it if you did that. <laughs> Steve spends a ton of time writing these show notes. So he's what he's trying to get at here is he'd like some appreciation in all the effort he's putting in um, because he's going to put a lot of emphasis into this show notes, typing out things like how awesome at Big Burrito Creative is on Instagram. At Not Big Dustin, Burrito underscore creative, though. <laughs> at Dustin and Corinne on Instagram. Uh, at Steven with a PH on Instagram. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) And I definitely in no way, shape or form directed people to hit the links in the show notes because that will actually take them to our things as opposed to taking them to the weird random things we've said. You can find Dustin at DJ (laughs) DMAC (laughs) attack.com. Anywho. Dustin, it has been great. I've made you record with me for almost two hours now because we're trying to uh, Steve, bust some of these things out. Steve, I would, I'd rather, I would. There's nowhere I'd rather be. Oh, Dustin, there's nowhere I'd rather be than in your arms. I mean, podcasting with you. Damn it, damn it, on Steve. An off, on an off topic. Well, let's say, hold on. Good, good night, Steve. Dustin. G- good night, Steve. Should I stay or should I go now? Hey, I don't know about you, but I've been checking out this thing called MySpace. Wedding Photo Hangover is edited by Steve Van Elk from Bespoke Tone. You can hit up Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, or audio editing needs.